Let's have a look at a sample question when defining ratios in the Cartesian plane. So the question states the following. The point P at the xy coordinates minus 3 and 4 is a point in the Cartesian plane. Angle XOP is the angle theta, where x is a point on the x-axis. Now without using a calculator, determine the value of the following. The cosine of theta, 3 tangent theta, and half cosecant theta. So let's have a look at the different steps that we need to take. So the first thing you need to do is you need to plot the point P on your Cartesian plane. So that would be at the x coordinate minus 3 and the y coordinate 4. So that is point P. Minus 3 and 4. We'll then join a line down to our origin because it tells us that our angle theta is the angle XOP, where X is a point on the X axis. So that would be from the positive X axis to our line OP. That is then theta. The next step we need to do, and it's not entirely necessary, but I think it's good practice. Let's write out our Sokoto mnemonic. Just makes it easier to remember those trig ratios. And then of course, we have defined previously that we, um, we've given the, the lengths of x and y, um, we've assigned those to our opposite and adjacent side. So the sine function, which is our opposite over our, our hypotenuse, would then of course be y over the radius, so the length of y over the length of the radius. Our adjacent side would be x over the radius, and the opposite over the adjacent would be y over x. So then on this Cartesian plane, we very conveniently already have a circle. All right, and we know that the radius of a circle is of course constant, and that we can see the lines or the points that it intersects the, the y axis or the, y, the x and the y axes is at 5. So we know that the length of the radius is 5. But this might not always be the case if you're given uh, a question to, to answer. So the next step in this case would then be to determine the length of r. So we would of course say, um, using the theorem of Pythagoras, that the hypotenuse squared, which is the radius, is equal to the sum of the adjacent squared and the opposite squared. So that would then be x squared plus y squared. So in this case, x is minus 3 plus y, which is 4. And that then gives us 9 plus 16. That's 25. Therefore, our radius is equal to so that just confirms what we already knew as a result of the fact that we had a circle superimposed on our Cartesian plane. All right, so now we can go ahead and we can determine the cosine of theta. So the cosine of theta, which is our adjacent over our hypotenuse, would then be x over r. We then just substitute our values, so that would be minus 3 over the radius of 5. And that is then our answer without using a calculator. I think that is relatively simple. Let's have a look at the second question. So then we need to determine 3 tangent of theta. So tangent is, of course, our opposite over our adjacent, which would then be y over x, and of course we need to multiply by 3. So that is then 3, and then we just substitute the values. So y is our point, our length of 4, over minus 3. And this would be the same as saying 3 over 1, multiplied by 4 over minus 3, the threes would cancel out and we would be left with negative four. And then finally, the half of cosecant of theta. 
Now, cosecant is, of course, the reciprocal to sine function. So the sine function would be y over r. This would then be r over y multiplied by a half. So that would then be 1 half multiplied by our radius, which is 5, over y, which is 4. So we then just algebraically solve, and that would then be 5 over 8.